what is a normal distribution? A normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution for a random variable like x. The graph of a normal distribution is called the normal curve. A normal distribution has the following properties. First of all, the mean, mode, and, mean, and the median are basically the same. The normal curve is bell-shaped and it is symmetric about mean. The total area below the normal curve is one or 100%. So 100% means one. So when we're talking about the one, it's nothing but 100%. Four, the normal curve approaches but never touches x-axis. It basically extends farther and farther away from the mean. But again, it never intersect the x-axis. There is no intersection. Between mu, minus sigma and mu plus sigma it means that you have the center add and subtract the standard deviation the graph curves downward the graph curves upward to the left of mu minus sigma and to the right of mu plus sigma the points at which the curve changes going up then going down are called the inflection points. So these are the most important properties for a normal distribution. We can also visualize the normal distribution this way. On the horizontal line, the balancing point is at the mean or mu. So these are all on the horizontal line. And this is just the behavior of the curve or the function. We can use mean, mean plus one standard deviation, mean minus one standard deviation, mean plus two standard deviations, mean minus two standard deviation, and finally, mu or the mean plus three standard deviations and mean minus three standard deviations and divide up the horizontal line into nicer sections. This is the properties. This is the law, this is the rule for normal distribution. And as you know, the area below the curve is blue shaded region is 100% or one. The inflection points are at mu plus sigma and mu minus sigma. So these two points on the horizontal line are at mu plus sigma and mu minus sigma. So now that we introduced a normal distribution, we are interested in analyzing a standard normal distribution. There are infinitely many normal distributions, but we are interested in creating something that is standard for every statistics course. Every statistician, every data analyst refer to this normal distribution as standard normal distribution. The mean of the standard normal distribution is always zero, and the standard deviation is always one. So these are the rules for standard normal distribution. In majority of cases, when you collect data and you try to change them in a way that are in confidential mode, you can convert them into z-scores or using standard normal distribution. It happens that the mean becomes zero and the standard deviation becomes one. The horizontal scale of the graph of the standard normal distribution corresponds not to x, but to z scores. We have a nice formula. Whatever your x value is, you can do the subtraction between x and the mean, 
and divide it by the standard deviation to get your z-score. z-score is x minus mean divided by standard deviation. So if you have the population, you are using Greek letters mu and sigma. When you are in a sample, you're going to use x bar and s. Make sure if the question doesn't mention anything about rounding, you need to round it to the nearest hundred. The most important part in dealing with either normal distribution or standard normal distribution is finding the probability or another word, the area. Whenever we talk about the probability, we're basically talking about the area below the curve. You have three different scenarios. The first scenario is find the area to the left side of x or to the left side of z. Okay. In this case, z is given to you as 1.23. The area to the left is going to be this shaded area on the left-hand side. So let me use my calculator and show you how to deal with this probability and area. Let me share the screen so we can see the calculator. So click on second, VARS, and you need to find not normal PDF, but your cursor must be at 2 which is normal C, D, F. So again, what I did, second, VARS, normal CDF. Click on normal CDF. Take a look. This area is on the left-hand side of 1.23. But on the left-hand side of 1.23, you have zero, you have some negative numbers, and it continues to the left-hand side. On the left-hand side, you have negative values. You can leave this as this small number, or you can change this into, so you're going to use a negative sign. The negative sign is going to be this sign inside parentheses. Negative 10, negative 100, something very small. Again, the question says, find the area to the left side of Z. Z is given to you as 1.23. Any number less than 1.23 is going to be on the left-hand side. So on the left-hand side, if you go further to the left, it's going to be a small negative number. For simplicity, you can use negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000. No one's stopping you. As long as you're using a negative sign, you are fine. Upper limit. Where does it stop? It stops at one point. 23 on the right hand side so 1.23 and what is the mean mean of the standard normal distribution is always zero what is the standard deviation the standard deviation or variability is always one so if you're working with z these two numbers are fixed and they stay the same so go to the next line and then hit enter hit enter again. So if you're using your TI-83 or if you're using your calculator on your phone, calculate 84, you have to type in everything this way. Normal CDF, open parenthesis, the lower bound, which is negative 100, comma, the upper bound, which is this number here, 1.23, comma, zero, which is the mean, comma, one, which is the variability or standard deviation. Hit enter. And as you can see, the area or the probability is 0 0.89065. But if you were to round it to four decimal places, since you have a five, you're going to add one to six. So it becomes 0 0.8907. So this area is 89.07% or in decimal form, 
zero seven. So again, either in decimal form or in percent form. When you're talking about probability, you're talking about this shaded region. The second scenario is usually asking you to find a probability on the right-hand side of Z. So for Z on the right-hand side, suppose you have the following information. Question says, the area to the left of Z is 1.23 is 0 0.8907. This is what we calculated. Now, what if I ask you to find the area on the right-hand side of 1.23? Well, what are we going to do? We're not going to use a table. Table is very old-fashioned. We're going to use our calculator. So take a look at your calculator. Let me share the screen. So on the right-hand side of Z, which is 1.23, again, you're going to hit second bars and you're going to find your normal cdf your cursor must be at normal cdf now your lower bound on the left hand side is 1.23 so change this to 1.23 on the right hand side the graph this shaded region the blue area continues to the right hand side so start at 1.23 and goes to where? A positive number. You can use 10 or you can use 100 or any large positive number. Remember that. As long as you're dealing with Z, mean is always zero and standard deviation is always one. Go to paste, hit the enter, and you get 0.1093. What's the meaning of that? It means that this area is 10.93% or 0.1093. So again, write it either in decimal or in percent. 10.93% and this is a 10 everybody. Or 0.1093. The next scenario that we're usually dealing with is finding the area bounded between two z-scores. So here, the z-score on the left is negative 0.75. The z-score on the right-hand side is 1.23. So between or in between the probability or the area bounded between two z-scores. We're going to use our calculator. In using your calculator, click second, Mars, and find normal CDF. Your lower bound is negative 0.75. So negative 0.75. And your upper bound is 1.23 on the horizontal line. So you're looking at this little piece on the horizontal line, 1.23. For z-score, mean is always zero, and standard deviation is always one. So again, since you are dealing with z, you have to keep these fixed as zero and one. Then you go to paste, paste again, hit enter again, and as you can see, the area is 0.6640, or the probability that z is bounded between these two numbers is 66.40%. So 66.41%. So this is the probability that Z is bounded between these two numbers.